G'day pals, welcome back to a new video. This one's been a little bit delayed because I've been off getting married. Uh, and um, in the time since, I was approached by a company to do a review of a new piece of hardware. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, full disclosure, off the top, it's a sponsored video. I don't have any uh, stake in the company and I don't get anything if you buy it or don't. So uh, hopefully you can uh, trust that this is an unbiased review as much as it can be. And I hope you enjoy it. So what have I got for you today? What I have is this thing here. It's called the Minbei Pixel Artboard. I was contacted by Minbei uh, about a month ago for the review. They sent me the unit and I've had a little bit of time over my honeymoon break to actually have a play with it. So, you know, a little bit about me for those of you who haven't seen my videos before. I am a pixel artist. I'm a game developer. Uh, I have experience in user experience design professionally uh, and I'm an overall tech geek. Uh, I don't usually do reviews like this, but I think I'm in a pretty good position to review a unit like this, given my experience. So here it is. This is the Minbei Pixel Artboard. It is a standalone device that you use to take on the go or at home uh, to create pixel art. So let me tell you about the first impressions I had with this device. On the front, we have this very Apple-esque packaging uh, with Steve Jobs on the front there. The packaging feels really premium and that vibe doesn't really end there because the device itself feels really good in the hand. It's got a quite weighty, high quality ABS plastic shell and um, the back is translucent. The whole thing is matte and it's got a really nice kind of like fingerprint free uh, feel to it. There is a USB-C port on the bottom. There is a power switch on the top left and on the front we have six face buttons as well as of course, the capacitive touchscreen. The rest of the contents of the box are uh, as follows. They're really nice and simple. We have a USB-C cable for that port there. It's there for power and data transfer. It's braided, not much else to say about it. There's also a wrist strap, uh, more callbacks to gaming hardware of previous generations. What else do we have in the box? We have a manual and a little page of stickers, which you can use to decorate the device or put wherever you want. So what happens when we fire this thing up? The first thing we see is the splash screen for the firmware. It says Minbei. From there, you're taken to the gallery. The gallery contains all of your 20,000 plus canvases. Uh, you can press settings to go into settings. And the settings has you know, basic features you can customize your experience with. Uh, from there, you can go back to the gallery with the gallery button. You can press on any of the canvases to open one up. So hitting the pencil button starts editing. And from there, you can drag along the palette to select a color and then draw to your heart's content on the screen. You can pinch to zoom. You can pan with two fingers as well. And beyond simple single pixel uh, drawing with the brush, you can also change to a couple of different modes. One is a line and the other is an ellipse. So once you're happy with your artwork, you can then erase it all with the eraser button. And uh, you can also navigate forward and backward through the history states with the back and forward keys when you're in edit mode. One sneaky little feature that I found is that if you uh, select a color from the palette and then tap and hold onto a color onto the canvas, it will replace that color, which is quite handy. One thing I'll note that was a really sort of jarring first impression was the fact that this palette here is fixed. There are 100 colors that this thing does and um, that's it. So you can't create your own palettes. The palette is fixed and it's fixed because what you're seeing here is a capacitive zone below the screen. So the capacitive layer extends below the display and the uh, this sort of like centimeter and a half by, you know, the entire bottom width is it's capacitive, but all it does is select colors. And what you're looking at here is not LCD. It's part of um, a sticker. It's basically a sticker over the top of, of a capacitive area and that's permanently there to select colors. So in the dark, it's a little bit of a hit and miss because the colors that you see here aren't going to be the colors on the screen. This is backlit, this is just a sticker. Um, and overall, I, I had a few issues with trying to select the color that I wanted. It's quite finicky. So once you're done creating your work, you can hit the gallery icon to go back to the gallery. It automatically saves and then you can upload your work to uh, wherever you want to upload it. So it's got a Bluetooth a little receiver in here. You can send it to your phone or you can send it to your PC via the USB-C cable from the bottom and a little bit of software that comes with the device. So to wrap up the hardware section of the review, what else can I say about it? I can say the battery life's really good. 
the display is uh, really clear and it's obviously a lot higher resolution than the actual pixel art itself. Uh, and the speakers are, are a nice touch. The UI has some uh, little blips and boops as you move around and generally it's, it's just kind of neat to have a little bit of sound feedback. So beyond my positive first impressions of the hardware, the next question is, how does the software work? What is the usability of this thing? And who is this really designed for? So uh, I can say that, you know, straight off the bat, the there are some limitations that you have to know about with this thing before you jump in. Now, I am a game developer, I'm a pixel artist, and a lot of my work involves quite high fidelity pixel art. You know, I work within canvases of 640 by 360 pixels for my game. My main character for my game is 64 by 64 pixels, and I work with a custom palette. Most of my work is animated. Now, straight off the bat, I can say that uh, the Minbei Pixel Artboard has a limitation of 100 colors total. Those aren't user set colors, those are colors that come with the device that you use to make all of the work with it. You can't change them. Second is the fact that the device has a limitation of 32 by 32 pixels for any canvas that you create with it. Part of this, I think, comes from the fact that it's a handheld device and if you're using your fingers to actually paint the pixels, showing you 64 pixels at a time would be probably infeasibly difficult to actually, you know, create something accurately. You'd be making mistakes everywhere. Another aspect of that would probably be the, uh, the hardware so that the CPU is quite lightweight. Um, if you have two fingers and you sort of move your hand around to sort of pan around the canvas, the thing's a little choppy. It runs at like 10 FPS. Uh, and likewise, when moving through the gallery, there's like an animated swipe to paginate, you know, through your pages of the gallery. And there it's a little slow as well. So you're not going to be creating huge canvases with this thing with custom palettes. Um, the third thing is it doesn't support any animation. There's just no tools that you can use inside of the software to do anything like that. And that leads me to the, the biggest point, which is that this doesn't really have many features at all when it comes to the actual creation of pixel art. You have your brush, you have an eraser, you have a palette. That's pretty much it. There is a line tool, there is a circle tool, and uh, you can uh, replace colors. But other than that, pencil, eraser, single pixel, that's what you get as far as brush size. So for me, as a game developer who does their work with pixel art, um, any one of those limitations is kind of a deal breaker. Uh, not being able to use my own palettes, not being able to animate and being limited to 32 pixels for a canvas size is kind of like it for me. Uh, but I can see that there would be scenarios where people who are more hobbyists, who are looking for something to play around with, um, especially people who do things with pixel art that's not necessarily um, for a purpose beyond pixel art. So. If you, for example, are one of those people who um, is into those little, uh, the bead work, where you kind of place beads on a grid and then you iron them down to create little badges, like this would work for that just fine. Um, additionally, if you're just sort of practicing pixel art and you just like to play around, uh, this is perfectly fine for beginners. If you do a lot of public transport and you're on buses a lot or trains, I could see you having a really good time just, you know, picking around and creating little canvases of whatever it is that your heart desires. Uh, it's not a tool that has no uses, but it is a tool that I think for the price and for me, wouldn't really be something that I would recommend to people who are doing what I do. So if this all looks good to you so far, the next question is, is the experience you're getting one that you will enjoy and find worth the price tag? So the recommended retail price for this device is over $100. It's, um, I believe, closer to $150. I'm in Australia, and so the pricing may be a little different where you are. I know that there's a Kickstarter going on at the moment, and for early adopters, the price is under $100. And overall, I would say, you know, if you've got the disposable income and you are happy to create pixel art that is, you know, in that smaller range, more lo-fi, then this could be something for you. My overall impressions for this device are that for a first generation device and pre-release, I would say the experience that I had is one that probably needed to be a little bit sharper before I could consider purchasing something like this for more than $100. Um, essentially, the firmware, the software, the user experience working together just fall short of what I would say is something that's um, fun and carefree. You know, there are little hitches that happen every now and again. If you move through the UI too quickly, you can kind of lock up the device. Uh, I was able to crash the device a few times, 
A major aspect of the workflow when creating pixel art is picking new colors. And when using the Minbay pixel artboard, this is something that you constantly have to hunt down in the bottom of the palette for. Um, the lack of an eyedropper tool for me was really difficult to get my head around, mostly because when you're creating work, drawing colors on screen and switching between different shades is very easy to do once you've got those colors on the canvas when there is an eyedropper tool. But not having that tool means even if you've got all of the colors on the screen and you just want to switch between two shades of skin tone or hair color or something like that, um, you're going to have to go and look for that color every single time. And when you're picking from a list of 100 in the bottom of your little piece of hardware there, that can be quite difficult to do. So voicing these concerns to Minbei, uh, they got back to me and said, you know, they're still working on the firmware, they're adding stability. They did send me an updated firmware version uh, during my review. And so I think there's hope there that uh, a device like this overall, over time, is something that could become worthy. And uh, with continued support, I'm sure that they will reach that target. There is a really nice device here. Like I said, the hardware feels really premium. It's great to hold in the hand. Uh, it just needs a few more kinks to be worked out before it's at that place where it can be what it's you know trying to be. So I think that if the Pixel Artboard has a good release and the developers you know commit themselves to having a good relationship with the community and to releasing regular updates for that community, I think that. For hobbyists, this could be a device that you would use on public transport, you know, chilling out on your lounge. It's great to have a standalone device that is separate from your phone, um, which has its own battery, has a good battery, which you can just pick up and tool around with whenever you feel like it. That's something that I think is, is worthwhile. The question, however, then becomes, does this compete in a market where there are lots of devices that meet that category, that meet that description? I think that remains to be seen. So. Uh, I will be placing a link in the description for where you can find one of these. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again. And uh, until next time.